As you are working on fairly complex projects in Godot, this one is not extremely complex, but there are some nested folders and there are lots of small scripts that I use to break down, for example, my shop menu. It's an RPG style menu tutorial series that's coming to Gumroad. You want to use the editor to your advantage, and I'm going to give you tips to navigate your project and help you find things quickly, starting with the file system. Disclaimer, this is a beginner level tutorial. Don't hit me if you know all of these already. I'm working on my shop, and sometimes I need to access things from my theme folder. So I want to go to the theme folder quickly, there's a list of favorite folders in the file system that you can leverage for that. Select the folder you want to store as a favorite and click the star icon to add it to your favorites folder. Even if it's folded later and I'm on the demo, I can click the theme folder to access it directly. And you can remove it from your favorites anytime. Then there is this search bar. It is one of the most important parts of the file system. It's a little hard to see at first, but you can search for any file. Say I want to grab my item button or the script maybe, I want to open it. I don't have it in the current scene. You can just search for the item button or I want to see what I have in terms of menus in my project. I call every menu something menu. We have the shop menu and the buy submenu in this case and the base menu. So I can open my scripts from there. I can find them in the file system. Let's look at similar things, but in the inspector this time. So let me open my shop menu because it has a tiny bit of complexity to it. And first, when you are working on UI, you have to go dive down into the control category and there are lots of sections and lots of properties. But at some point, you will know which properties you want to modify because you modify the same ones very often, like the size flags or the base rectangle to set the minimum size on a given item. Like these buttons should have a minimum size set to them. As you can see, minimum height. So instead of scrolling down, looking for the category and all, you can use the search bar. And in Godot 3.1, it's even a little better. You search for the property you want. So minimum gives me the rec category with minimum size. The categories stay closed by default. That's a bit of a pity, but this works great. If I'm looking for the size flags, I start to search for size and I will get the size flags category. I think it will work if you search for the category name because often you will see, even if it's only searching for the property name, currently size underscore flags underscore horizontal, uh, the name of the category is in the property names under it in general. You can also find sub resources attached to a given node. So if I head to my shop menu and click on the node's name in the inspector, I will get a list of all the resources that are attached to that node. So at the top, you can see in the script variables, we have a buy menu, a sell menu that we spawn from the code, but I also have a theme and I can find all the data that's inside that theme. So the button styles, the panel styles, this can be handy if you want to navigate to a given resource so say I want to edit my theme, I can click on the theme and it will open the resource instantly. I can add new properties to it, I can modify the existing ones and use the back arrow to navigate back to the shop menu. In this case, this again is easier than going down to the theme category and opening it from there. When I want to edit any resource, I click on the node's name and click on the resource. Note that you also have on top of these two arrows to navigate back and forth in the inspector's history, you have a history list where you can find the nodes you've navigated to. Say I'm working a bit on the navigation panel and I work on the buy button, then go back to the shop menu. If you have nested uh, nodes or you have a closed hierarchy like that, you can use the navigation history 
to go back to the buy button in this case or the description panel it will expand the note tree for you as well saving you a little bit of time in the process you have two shortcuts to open files and scripts Control shift o will open the quick open scene menu and you can type to find a given scene in your project so if I want to find anything that includes the name button in it, I will search for button, I can open it. If I want to find my menus, I type menu and I can get all of these. The advantage compared to using the file system is if you have many assets, many items in your project. When I type menu, I get GDScript files. I don't have sprites in this case, but imagine if you start to have sprites called something menu instead of using the theme system. If you have sprites for a mobile game, for example, and they include the word menu, they'll all appear in that small area. So instead, Control shift o quick open scene, and type menu to find all the menu scenes. And as you have fuzzy search, sometimes you will find some strange candidates, but because this last entry has the letters M-E-N-U inside of it, you get the uh, equipment scene as a suggestion. So Control alt o does the same thing, but for script files. So the equivalent for script files is Control alt o quick open script. And with that, you can also search for your script, like uh, menu in this case. Note that uh, if you want a script that is attached to a given scene, you can just open the scene, so if I open shop menu and I head to the script editor with F3, Godot will automatically open the shop menu script and select it in the list. And that's also happening when, for example, you click to open a scene in the editor, a description panel has a script attached to it. So I click there, you will see that description panel opens up in the script editor and gets selected. A quick tip about these two options. So I'll press Control shift o to open the quick open scene. And sometimes you will type a word. I have many scenes called item or that include item in the name because there's lots of things in the item folder. And typing item, if I want my item scene, well, I'm not getting it, obviously. So you can add the slash character if you want to make sure that you are searching for the item folder if you are searching for the path and be sure to use the dot and the extension if you want to get the corresponding scene at the top of the suggestion list that's a small tip but just in case you wouldn't think of it and would be surprised by the results the list gives you let's wrap up with the script editor i'll press f3 to jump to it let's start with the documentation because there are a few things you can do to navigate the docs faster. So first, the big shortcut to know in Godot is F4 to search for the help in Godot 3. And you can search for any class or any property. For example, I could search for node, but I could also search for um, get child or something like that and find the corresponding methods on given classes. In this case, node entry item. Now, once you've searched for the class you want to open, press enter to open it in the script editor. So the first thing, as you are coding, you don't want to have to reach out for the mouse every time you want to navigate back to the script you were working on. So you can press alt left to go back in the navigation history and alt right to go forward in the navigation history. Alt left, go back, alt right, go forward. Uh, this doesn't store where you've been inside of a script, unlike some editors like Visual Studio Code, for example, but it will navigate between files. Now, uh, if you are navigating in a big class like this one, and there are quite a few in Godot, a few things you can do. First, Control F to find some text. So let's go for get a child like that. And as you press on find, you will navigate to the next entry. 
in the editor. Now, this is a bit crappy in Godot 3 because you get that modal window, but uh, in Godot 3.1, this is a search bar at the top of the script editor like you'd expect, and it doesn't overshadow the entire screen. But th this is still handy, you know, navigating with find, encode in general is something you, you should get used to. Now, you also have this list of the main categories in the documentation. You should use it. Say I open the note class and I want to know about its signals. Well, I click on signals and jump to it directly. Because if I'm at the top of the class and use Control F to search for signals, the problem is there may be some descriptions that um, will have the word signals, like here in the enumerations. That's not what I want. I want to get to the signals part of it, so you can jump to it quickly. Next up, then going back to the top, is to use all these links here. So you always have a brief description for the class, followed by the member variables, followed by the public method, and you can use that to jump quickly to the corresponding method and description, but then you have to click on the top button to go back to the top and to this list. Uh, this list is very important if it's your first time exploring a given class. I don't have much experience with 3D, so if I were to look at the spatial class, for example, there are lots of things I don't know much about, like transform, spatial gizmo here, um, I can see the world and all these methods, I'm not used to them. So I would explore the class from these public methods and the member variables this way. Note also at the top, this is very important, you have the classes this node inherits from. So it inherits from nodes and from object, meaning if you go to the node docs here, Spatial not only has everything you can see here, if I scroll down, many properties, it also has everything you can find in node and everything you can find in object because all nodes inherit from object. Okay, let's wrap this up with a few coding tips or navigation in your own code. I've shown you folding in another video. Now, note that you can use the menu in the bottom left to see the interface of your script, so the existing methods, at least, not all the properties, but you can also use control click on any variable or any function that you call in your script to see where it was defined. For example, menu placeholder, if I don't know what that is, I'll control click on it and this will jump to the line where the variable was created. So I know that this is the menu placeholder node, a panel in this project. Also use search to navigate inside your script. So you can select any keyword. First, it will get highlighted in your file. You can press Control F to find it and press Enter to jump to the next occurrence of this keyword. When you want to see where you use a signal, for example, you search for connect and you can find all the connect and disconnects in your script as your scripts get over 20 lines of code, like they're just a bit longer than the screen. This is a handy thing to get used to doing. This is something I use not to do so much, but since I use Veeam a lot, this is the basic way to navigate files in this uh, mouse-free editor. So that's why I got used to it. I highly recommend it. And one last small tip, a very small one, but that I find very handy. When you go to the file menu, you have the ability to close all the scripts. So to clear that list that can get a bit long and you can also close all the other tabs. Very often, I want to work on one script and have a reference to another script. Let me give you an example. I'll go back to my shop menu, and the shop menu is going to instantiate buy menu and sell menu. So when I'm working on that sell menu, for example, I'll open it with Control alt o sell menu.gd. I have it here and I want to add some functionality. So let's write a new variable, call it placeholder as an example. So I'm working on some new functionality 
And really, I have too much clutter here. I just want to work with these two scripts. But if I do close all the other tabs, it's going to close all the other tabs, including the script I want to work with, Shop Menu. Now, as I've made a modification on Cell Menu, I can select Shop Menu, go to File, close all the other tabs, and Godot will ask me for confirmation for the files I've modified but not saved. And I can click Cancel, and that way, Cell Menu stays open with Shop Menu. This is a little bit dangerous, say, if you were to click on Discard or Save. It would save and still close the tab. But there you go. That's my last small tip, mini hack. I hope that's useful to you. I know that uh, I discovered some of these over time. So if you're just getting started, this may give you a little head start. That said, what are your tips to navigate in Godot? Do you have things that I did not cover here that are handy? Please share them with us. Be sure to like the video, to subscribe. This is important. Check out our long Godot course. You can find a link on the screen if you want to really get much further with Godot. Be creative, have fun, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.